Local Legends is about people, places, and history from Fairfield and surrounding areas that have achieved legendary status. We have an amazing community and are proud to share it with you. We hope you enjoy. My guest today is a professional journalist and a Fairfield history buff. He's the guy that keeps the legends alive. Please welcome Tony Wade. How you doing? I'm well. How you doing, Frank? Good. Can you give us a little background about yourself, about writing? Well, I started writing in, you know, as a little kid, and I was got encouragement from a number of teachers at uh, schools in Grange and um, and at Army High. And some of those teachers I'm still in contact with, as a matter of fact. Mm. Uh, my eighth grade English teacher, Miss Evans, and uh, my tenth grade teacher, Mr. Shear, I still send them my columns every every uh, Monday. You know, those seem like encouraging words back. So really? they, they meant so much to me, helping me out. Uh, so that's really where it started in, in school, getting encouragement from teachers and um, doing what I like to do. So you write a lot about Fairfield. What's so special about this place? A lot of things. I think w the main thing that people see when they come to Fairfield is, is the location, is the, uh, you know, in between San Francisco, Sacramento, and how uh, it's centrally located and the weather and all that. Um, but there's a lot of history here in this area that people may not know about. Um, so uh, that's the, the kind of thing that when I first started doing this column uh, back in the day for the Data Republic on Fridays, um, what I saw was so many stories that were not being told. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of history that's been written about Fairfield and uh, Solano County, other cities. Um, but a lot of the stories that are from people who are still around, you're not going to find these stories in history books. And they may not be in history books ever, but they are uh, interesting stories nonetheless. So that's the kind of stories I like to tell. So for those stories that are hidden, how do you go about you know, finding these stories and then go about telling them? Well, the biggest resource for me has been the I Grew Up in Fairfield 2 Facebook group. Hmm. I joined that group uh, in 2011. And that was really the impetus when I saw these, uh, it was really a different thing. Uh, it was a, a new and unique thing. There were people who had these shared memories uh, of Fairfield in the old days or some stuff that I'd, I'd never heard of. Right. But they've always had them, but up until that point that Facebook came around, there was really no place for those people to share those, I, those uh, stories. And so, I mean, I might go into a diner in Fairfield and see some old uh, guys talking about stuff, but I'm probably not going to go up and talk to them about it or get into their conversation. Right. But in Facebook, it encourages that sort of thing. And so that's, that's kind of was the, I get a lot of that from, uh, from those, that Facebook group and other places. So what do you think has ever been your most controversial column? Wow. Uh, well, as it happens, I wrote a column years ago about a friend of mine, Nancy Ann Gregg, mm. who she discovered that her grandmother uh, had been in this, um, the Ku Klux Klan's women's auxiliary. Oh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> and I say that with all sarcasm. Right, yeah. right. So, so she, she had this pin from her grandmother. Not, no, no, she's my friend. She's not like that at all. Right. But, but um, the thing about it was I thought it was interesting. I thought it was an interesting story, and I, I didn't know the Klan had a woman's auxiliary. I thought that was Who knew? interesting. Right. So I wrote the column about this woman, and all these people are saying this crazy stuff, and I, and I just didn't, I, I didn't understand what they are coming from. I was like, the way I look at it is I always try to write a column that I would like to read. Right. This is an interesting story. My feelings about the Klan, do you really have to ask me about that? Right. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. But, but, um, but just the story itself was an interesting story. So that was definitely the most controversial. And I usually don't write controversial columns. Mine are more like you know, warm, fuzzy stuff, usually. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm shooting for. But through all that warm fuzziness, you, have one, you had like one really controversial one. Do you have like a super popular column that everybody likes to read about? Uh, a few. W w one of the ones which really got ruined recently was um, why are there two Denny's in Fairfield right next to each other? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but they closed the one, and so it kind of ruined the whole column. Right. But so I, I had to actually find out why this was because people lived here. They always go, why is that? They go, why is the Denny's right here and the Denny's right over here? And I, so I, I researched it and found out why, and people loved it. You know, they, they thought it was great. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. This isn't really like. His, you're not going to find that in a history book some, someday. But, right. but it was an interesting column, which was um, definitely relatable um, to a, a lot of people related to it because it was about something they experienced. So. so are there any hidden treasures around Fairfield that the people at home should know about that they probably don't know about? Well, I haven't written those columns yet, so you're going to have to wait on that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, 
And one of the things, I, one of the columns I am going to write uh, coming up soon is about the Armory uh, Museum that's here, which I haven't been to yet. Wow. Yeah, so I, I didn't know about that till recently, um, but it's something that I'm, I'm looking into. That, that. There's, a lot, there's a lot of historic stuff here that people just may not know of. Um, like there's a, a building on Dover, which actually used to be um, an old school. Uh, I can't think of the school now. But it used to be an old school, and uh, so I want to go into that kind of thing. So people, things you see every day, but you may not know the story behind it. Wow. Yeah, no, I, that's, that, that's, that's some powerful stuff. That's some powerful stuff because there's a lot of stuff like you were just talking about before, you know, the cameras went on, lights, camera, action, that you said about a, uh, a drive-in movie theater. You know, me being young, I was born in 97, so I, I don't know about this stuff, but I've been here all my life, wow. and yet I've got all this history here, and I don't know, and the people in my generation don't know. So I just want to thank you for, like, opening this up for everyone to see and be like, wow, like this is, this is like the place that I come from. I gotta have pride in it because there's so much great history and a lot of it we don't even know about. Right, right. And yeah, the drive-in was uh, uh, where the Rayleigh's is at now, um, down there by Texas Roadhouse. Right. That's where the big screen was at, and uh, yeah, I mean we went there all the time with my family. You know, it was a, it was a big, and it been it was been there for decades, and then it blew down in '88. The screen did. So. Now. Who do you think are the most popular, maybe you have like multiple people, who do you think is like the most popular person or people to ever come out of this area? Well, the two that spring to mind who are arguably the most famous uh, Fairfieldians, Fairfielders, uh, would probably be uh, one, uh, Pat Morita. All right. And uh, Johnny Cola. Now, Johnny Cola is actually from Susun. Uh, Susun City, but he uh, went to school at Armio, so he's a Fairfielder. Right, so, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Pat Morita um, was from the class of 1949 at RMEO, and uh, he's obviously famous for uh, the Karate Kid, and uh, he was in Happy Days, the television show before that. Right. But when Mr. he was, Miyagi. when he was, yeah, Mr. Miyagi. And it's funny because he he was, uh, um, you know, he's well known for being a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. and then uh, he went on television and and uh, had great success there. And then he made a real misstep because they gave him his own show, Mr. T and Tina, which I think lasted like, like I don't know, eight episodes or something. All right. And, uh, was, and was canceled. But then later he, he uh, did uh, The Karate Kid, which catapulted him to uh, superstardom, really. Um, that's what did it. But, but at Arm even before he even went to Armeo, he was in, uh, he was born in Isleton. And uh, his first, I think his first seven years of life, he had tuberculosis, so he's in a full body cast, you know. And uh, then he gets out of the cast, and right then was when they were shipping all the uh, Japanese uh, residents to these camps. Right. You know, so that, so that, that was his life, you know, up until that point. Uh, but then he came back to Army after the war and uh, became friends with a lot of people. Some of them are still around. Art Engel is, uh, was a classmate of his, is oh, still really? in town. Yes. Yeah. Art, I just talked to Art about his. 88 years old. Whoa. And was really good friends with him. <laughs> right. And uh, they called him uh, by his name, which is Nori, Noriyuki, and Nori for short. And um, there's a great video of Pat Morita talking about his time living in Fairfield, where he talks about how there was a lot of people at that time, the, the kids' parents, his, right. his, his friends' parents, who were really against Japanese people and mm -hmm. all that, kind of, which, you know, the wartime. And, you right. Know. But he goes, it was never like that with his friends. He was just another kid, you know, and, that's it. and that really gave him his, his sense of self for the first time in his life. It's a great little clip. Uh, yeah, no, I, I saw it on your page. I saw it on your page. That, yeah. that was nice because he, he seemed like really relaxed and he was just telling like, hey, the parents weren't showing me a lot of love. You know, of course, I'm paraphrasing. Right. The parents weren't showing me a lot of love, but my friends, I, I adore them. And he, and he seemed like he was a really down-to-earth guy. Right. Yeah, but he also, it also said um, that... He loves sports, but he just he was small. just he was too small. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, was, right. he was too small. But uh, yeah, he had he really had a passion for he did. sports. Yeah, he did. Is there is there anything else like about him that like like we need to know about? Well, the cool thing was like on their fiftieth reunion in nineteen ninety nine, he couldn't make it, and so instead of just sending you know a card or something saying he couldn't make, it, he made this video, and the, in the video he's dressed as a, a prospector, a a forty nine er. That's what they're the class of forty nine. So right. he's, he's prospecting. And um, he's uh, he's like he's a, he's a gold miner, and he's the cool the coolest thing was he mentions uh, some of the people he, he grew up with, and he says you know they all became gems, and he starts mentioning their names, you know Engel wow. uh, and Machado and all these people from the class of '49, which was really cool. 
and, uh, and he got some flight later from not mentioning any of the other women, but whatever. Oh. Um, but it was a nice little clip that he sent to them, and it's available on, I put it on YouTube as well. Right. Um, actually, Irving Seibel was the one who actually came up with that clip. On the, he's the one who actually posted it first, not me. So, but it, it was, he was a really thoughtful person. Right. You know, so. And it always pays to treat others the way you want to be treated because you never know who they could be one day or whether they, they end up being somebody legendary or not. It's just great just to treat them you know, with respect. And it seems like that paid off when he uh, went to the, his, uh, well, he did the video for his 50th uh, reunion. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that. We're going to talk more with Tony Wade and we're going to be talking about Johnny Cola coming up next right after these messages. Do you have the free My Fairfield CA app? Go to your app store and simply type the name My Fairfield CA in the search window and press Get. With this app, you'll have access to multiple services right at your fingertips, including emergency services, public works issues, and water bills. So download the app on all your smart devices. Don't wait until you need it. Get the free My Fairfield CA app today. And we're back in Studio 26, and it's Local Legends with Tony Wade. Now, can you please talk to us a little bit about Johnny Cola? Yeah, sure. Johnny Cola, um, Sue Soon Boy. Mm. And uh, uh, everybody who knows him talks about how down to earth he is. Wow. And uh, incredibly talented musician. Everybody talks about what a uh, wonderful person he is. And I've met him a few times, and I know him. And, he is that way. It comes across as uh, very genuine. When you think about, they've sold 30 million albums. Um, well, in well, the wow. 80s, they were enormous. Uh, Huey Lewis in the News. Yeah. Uh, but he started out here with local bands, a band called the Furlanders was the first band he had. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was in uh, Cottonmouth, the U.S. Army, a number of other local bands that were popular around here. They would play at Rockville. Um, <laughs> they would play at a place called Hippie Hill. Uh, no, the Hippie Hill might have been later. But they played at... Um, uh, West Texas Street Park, now Allenwood Park, and we're well known in this area. And uh, he, he, you know, went from band to band. He was in a band called Sound Hole, which looked like that was going to be his breakthrough. Mm. But then he was playing at Bozo's Bus Stop, I believe it was, out by the base on Parker Road. Alliteration. Yeah. And then, <laughs> he, uh, he, they had this great gig, yeah. and then after it, him and another guy were fired from the band, and he was devastated. Why? Uh, they were going in different directions. Yeah, they were yeah, going in different directions. Yeah. But he fell up because then he went to Sly and the Family Stones uh, band right after that. And they made an album. And uh, that, then after that, he met Huey Lewis. And the rest, as they say, is history. So uh, that's it. And, he be, and they came out with a couple albums. And pretty soon they were, you know, they were the soundtrack to the, to the 80s there, you know. Right, because I remember watching Back to the Future for the first time. And I'm seeing them. And I'm like, oh, who are these guys? But... We, uh, they did hip to be square, right, right? And I'm just like, oh yeah, that's it. Like it, it sounds '80s. You know how something okay. that has that sound of the era. That that was definitely the sound of the '80s for sure. And he went to Armio, and his his uh, favorite story is uh, is his favorite little saying is Armio was the uh, high school was the best five years of his life uh, <laughs> because he was supposed to graduate in '69, and he actually he drew the cover of the 1969 Armio La Mescla yearbook, as a matter of fact. Really? But then he didn't graduate till 1970. Yeah. So, um, uh, but but that that gave him uh, you know drive and determination uh, and uh, you know to follow his dreams and you know he did it. I mean, uh, they are enormous. They're you know worldwide. They're known. The, the funny thing is this: that album uh, Sports that uh, had so many hits on it. Um, we we had this thing at the. I was with the Armio Alumni Association for a number of years. Right. We kind of fizzled, it's a long story, but mm -hmm. we still give out the scholarships. And one of the things that started, this guy, uh, Scott Tonneson, a local, he, he started this thing a few years ago. We interview the students, and then after we tell them, okay, we're done with the interview, now we have a couple of, we have a quiz for you. Mm. And we asked them, have you ever heard of uh, Pat Morita? Right. And then, uh, and then we asked him, have you ever heard of John, uh, Huey Lewis in the News? And we tell them why. And we were surprised last year, 15, like 14 to 15 had heard of Pat, Pat Morita. We were stunned, because before we've asked him, we've got blank stares. We go, he, uh, you know, Karate Kid, n not the remake, no, with uh, Will Smith's son, right, the original. Right. Uh, so many did, but uh, Hugh Lewis in the news, the younger kids, they're not really, yeah. they ain't that hit to be square. But 
but anyway, that yeah. we, we, that's a fun little thing that we do, a little Fairfield history. We tie into it. So Now, you talked about Fairfield history. Can you give me about three or four urban legends about Fairfield that you really love, or maybe just like two, or how many, how many you got? Urban legends? Urban legends. Urban legends, like, like something like, like a story that's attached to this place that we live in. I mean, there, there are things I read uh, that are incorrect. Is that what you mean? Sure. <laughs> I mean, no, no, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I've heard like ghost stories and stuff like that. You, I was meaning to do one about that. Uh, Halloween is coming up. Right, right. yeah. So, I, I, but I, I, what springs to mind are just things that people, like, people always say that uh, when Armeo first was uh, the original Armeo building, on um, um, Union Avenue was a wooden Queen Anne structure. Mm. And then it became what's now the uh, Solano County Hall of Justice over there. On, and still the building is still there, but now it's the Hall of Justice. Right. Well, it, there was a fire there. People always assumed that the fire burned down uh, the old army, but it didn't. It was actually a, the um, Solano County Library was located inside Armio at that time. Mm. That caught on fire, and it was a big loss. But the building itself is made of, you know, um, bricks and stuff, so it didn't burn down. Right. Uh, so anyway, that's one. I don't, I, I, there's a lot, but I can't really top of my head. I can't spring anything on you. Do you have any other like story? You have any other stories about Fairfield or the, or the surrounding area, like in Sassoon, that or Vacaville, that just stories that just like touch your heart. A number. I think the the main thing is uh, stuff, stories about people. Right. Uh, stories about um, what I love to do is talk to a person, usually a person who's uh, I say older than me, right. uh, who has um, experience in uh, you know life experience and has stories that may not have been told. Um, just recently, there was a, there's a school in Susun City, uh, Dan O'Root Elementary. Okay. And the Dan O'Root the second elementary because there, there's a second, third, fourth, and fifth. And um, the stories of who he was, as far as I know, wasn't being told. When you Google Dan O'Root uh, the second, a ton of stuff about the school comes up, right. but nothing about the person. And uh, he, did, he accomplished a lot of things. They called him Mr. Susun City. Hmm. At one point, uh, the city didn't have money for decorations for downtown, and he bought all of them, you know, and things like that. There's a lot more to it. But he, was, he, did, he had a lot of accomplishments in his life that hadn't been told him to that point. So that, that was my main point, too, was when I first started doing that column, was that there were things that I remembered and some things that I just found, about, found out about by talking to other people that I thought would be interesting. And, uh, and I wanted to you Google stuff, and there's nothing about it. Right. Eucalyptus Records and Tapes was uh, a place I used to go to get my music back in the day. Mm. And I Googled it years ago, and nothing comes up for it, you know? And so... Um, so now, if you Google it, there will. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that it, a lot of I put on there about eucalyptus, you know. And like I said, that that it's not earth shattering. That isn't uh, right. Um, people who live in um, other parts of the country or even the state may not care, but they may be able to relate to a place that they went to. The and that's faded, the that's faded the thing. Away. Right. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Yeah, you're a really personable person. Yeah. Oh, so are you. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> and, and on that note, we're going to take a break, and we're going to be right back with Tony Wade here on Local Legends. More businesses are continuing to take advantage of the Heart of Fairfield Facade Improvement Grant Program. This 50-50 partnership with the City of Fairfield offers businesses up to $20,000 for improvements, including store signage, building facades, and outdoor seating. This is a great opportunity to enhance your business while preserving the true heart of Fairfield. Apply today. Go online at fairfield.ca.gov slash facade or call 707-428-7462 for more information. And we're back with the professional and the personable Tony Wade. Now, during the break, we were talking a little bit about Sambos. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's, well, you asked about the urban legends, and I think this is more like uh, just misif misinformation. Right. Um, so whenever I see something on, somebody posts something about Sambos. There, there was a Sambos in Fairfield, one in Vacaville as well. And uh, it eventually closed. And whenever, whenever uh, people see it, they'll, they'll go, oh, somebody's, somebody, I know somebody's going to post on there. Well, too bad that political correctness closed it down. Right. Closed down all of them. Yeah. Except for one. <laughs> now, how would that happen? So I, I started investigating that. I'm like, if that happened, wouldn't that be the one of the best examples, if depending on what side of that issue you're on, right. of um, 
of uh, political um, and action being put to the test and actually causing a huge result? Wouldn't there be some sort of record about, about that somewhere? Of course. There isn't, because right. that's not what happened. Uh, to be sure, there was some pressure put on Sam Bose to uh, change your name. And it didn't start in the late 70s, as some people say either. It started in the early 70s. There was issues about it. So it wasn't something new either. Uh, but also, um, what happened was this awful business plan they had. Hmm. That's what ruined Sam Bose. And this isn't me saying this. There's, a, there's at least two books that have been written about this. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> so, so the, yeah, the, it, 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 you think about it, uh, the logical thing would be if all these stores closed, like, like Domino's, um, wouldn't there be something that, that connected them all um, that would make logical sense? And what makes logical sense is that they had this terrible business plan called a, a fraction of the action is what doomed them. So, But that, that's one of the things that I've seen that, um, and so I did write a column about that finally, and no one said anything else about it. So, all right, so <laughs> it sounded like you did the right thing to me. Yeah, so. so we've been talking about Fairfield this whole time because this is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. We're Channel 26, we're in Studio 26, and we're talking about Fairfield. If I'm someone and I'm going to Napa or Sacramento or San Francisco, why should I stop in Fairfield? Well, that's a good point. Uh, there's there's a lot of things uh, in this area. One you know one thing I like is uh, theater, and uh, mm. we have a um, I know we had Jeff Traeger on here. We did. And uh, one of the things that the downtown theater is like the, the downtown hidden jewel of Fairfield. One of the things Jeff Traeger always does when he comes out at shows is ask people, how many people never, have never been here before? And stunningly, so many people raise their hand all the time. It's a shame, too. It's, it's, it's unbelievable because it's a beautiful theater. It is. And uh, so we do have a lot of um, that, that going on. We also have the uh, Tomato Festival, which uh, I went to years ago. And honestly, at that time, this is like, I don't know, 20, 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it wasn't doing so well. Right. Now, I mean, it was, um, the last few years I went, it's been unbelievable. Tomato and Vine Festival. Tomato and Vine Festival. And they have a lot of uh, vendors, uh, bands, uh, plenty of stuff to eat. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, and I, I love the community spirit, and which leads me to. Um, one of the other things is that Fairfield is 100,000 something people, and yet we still, have, we still hold on to this uh, small town thing right. too. And you only see that the most when we have our parades on the 4th of July and um, on Veterans Day. And you see the whole community out there, you know, uh, every spectrum, religion, whatever, right. is out there together. Uh, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. That's been, uh, so I, and I always participate in that. Actually, years ago it was gonna be canceled and so we had this drive to uh, get people to volunteer to do stuff. So, and I said, right. jokingly, I said, look, I'll be a pooper scooper if that will help, you know? Yeah. And they held me to it. And uh, <laughs> and actually, that's been, I did, so I helped the Boy Scouts. And it's hilarious. We have a great time. And, then, and people think, oh, it's so gross. I'm like, look, they treat you like rock stars. They lo they cheer for the pooper scoopers. It's a lot of fun. So I do that. And uh, and I, I, I think seeing the, so you asked me about what should people come to Fairfield for? And I went somehow to pooper scooping. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but <laughs> but that's uh, <laughs> it's fine. But we do have Jelly Belly too, by the way. We so do, we, yeah, we do. The pooper scoop. We have Jelly Belly. All right, so. we have poop and we have Jelly Belly and, and beer and beer. So and I don't drink, but so. right, yeah. But you know, every now and then, if we partake, you know, we got it. We got it right here. Right. Now, in the beginning, the way I introduced you, I said, you know, you're professional and you're historian, but also you help keep the legends alive of Fairfield. Why is that so important to you? Well, I think there's there's a number of people who uh, have made a huge impact on people's lives, and one of those is George Martin. I'm gonna talk about George Martin. He, when I said arguably about uh, Johnny Cola and uh, Pat Morita, George Martin was right there too. Right. George Martin went to uh, Armio, and uh, he played for the Giants, and they won the first um, Super Bowl championship with the Giants with Bill Parcells' team, and I mean that team was incredible. They start, they're the ones who started dumping the uh, Gatorade. They're the ones who popularized that thing back in the day. And, uh, but George Martin would come to uh, different high schools and um, give this talk on setting goals. This is, he came to Grange when I was there, and we came to Armio, and uh, not just that, he's done a lot of other things with his life, with his, with his celebrity. I've had him come speak at uh, schools and stuff, and uh, a wonderful person. And mm -hmm. there's a number of people like that. Right. You know, and not, I keep bringing up Armio, but we have a, we have a uh, um, woman who won the uh, gold medal uh, for um, Olympic gold medal for Fairfield High School, right? You know, so we have we have a number of people in this area who uh, have have uh, been very high achieving, and um, people just don't know about some of this stuff. 
And we just want to thank you for coming in today and opening our eyes up to the history of Fairfield and just thank you for keeping all the legends alive. Thank, thank you so you. much for stopping by. Thank you. Yep. This has been Local Legends with Tony Wade and we just want to thank you guys for watching and we're going to see you soon.